من عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد Dear Muslims How often is it that we hear a khutbah, a lecture We hear a piece of advice And the first thing that we think of Oh, I wish somebody else were here So and so were here he or she needs to hear exactly what I have heard. That person will benefit more than myself. Dear Muslims, if every time an advice is given to you, if every time something of benefit is given to you, and your mind automatically goes to somebody else, thinking that somebody else needs it more than you, then the fact of the matter is that this is a sign a symptom of the beginnings of a spiritual disease. That disease is called spiritual takabbur. The notion that I am too holy, I don't need this. The notion that I don't need this advice, that guy needs that advice. My, my enemy who did this, that evil person who did that, automatically as if you are made out of Teflon, everything comes your way, goes over you, goes to somebody else. Dear Muslims, to have the sense of spiritual arrogance is a symptom of a disease of the heart. One of the biggest diseases of the heart, and that is the disease of kibir, of arrogance. Worse than this is to go beyond deflecting every nasiha to somebody else, to then become obsessed with you becoming the person who is correcting everybody else's mistakes, even as you ignore your own mistakes. Dear Muslims, the righteous person is more worried about himself and herself than about anybody else. The one of taqwa, the person of spirituality, is far more concerned with one's own faults, one's own shortcomings than with the perceived shortcomings of other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Don't ascribe piety to yourselves. Only Allah knows who has taqwa. Don't ascribe piety to yourselves. Anyone who thinks, I don't need that advice. Anyone who says, I am pious, has demonstrated that they are not pious. Because true piety doubts its existence. True taqwa trivializes its presence. In other words, the more taqwa you have, the more you will be scared you don't have it. And the less taqwa you have, the more you will feel you will have. And that's why Allah is telling us, don't ascribe taqwa to yourselves. Don't ascribe piety to yourselves. That's not the way of the believer. Only Allah knows who has truly achieved taqwa. Dear Muslims, never forget of the fundamental principles of our religion. The Quran is very clear. More than a dozen verses tell us, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No soul is going to bear the burden of another. You are responsible for yourself primarily. Even your spouse and children on the day of judgment, you will only have to answer to your responsibility to them, not what they have done, not what they have chosen to do. You are responsible primarily for yourself. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu alaykum anfusakum. O you who believe, guard your own selves. O you who believe, monitor yourselves. لا يضركم من ضل إذا اهتديتم. The misguidance of the one who goes astray is not going to harm you as long as you have achieved your own hidayah. Allah is telling us to not be obsessed with the perceived faults of other people and to be far more obsessed with your own state in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. Every soul is going to be stopped on the day of judgment. Rahina means you're going to be mortgaged, you're going to be stopped. Rahan is a mortgage, you're stopped there until you answer not for the deeds of other people, for your own deeds. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. Every soul is going to be stopped based upon what they have done. They will have to account for their own deeds, their own good, their own bad. 
we have to monitor ourselves far more than other people and when we find that our minds are always going to other people when we find that any advice any khutbah any poignant message that anybody tells us automatically we think it doesn't apply to me i'm not arrogant i'm not this i'm not that and we think of another person and you know what maybe that person does need to hear it you know what maybe that person really is guilty but the fact that you automatically feel you are not guilty is a problem that has nothing to do with the other person maybe you're right Maybe that other person should have been listening to the khutbah as well. Maybe that other person has the same disease 10 times worse than you. Maybe you're right. But on the day of judgment, that other person's disease is not going to harm you. It's not going to affect you. Your disease will affect yourself. Our Prophet wasallam reminded us, beautiful hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي of the perfection of one's Islam. It is the perfection of your own Islam is to leave what is not going to benefit you. Mind your own business primarily. Concern yourself with your own lives and your own lifestyles rather than that of other people. Once in the late Madani period when a lot of new Muslims had embraced Islam, many of them were hypocrites. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and he gave a very emotional khutbah. This hadith is in Tirmidhi. He raised his voice very loudly. Rafa'a sawtahu, the hadith says. And in a part of that khutbah, what did he say? Ya ma'ashara man aslama bi lisanihi wa lam yaqdil imanu fi qalbihi la tu'dhu al-muslimin. O people, whose tongues have said they're Muslim, but their hearts have not yet touched Iman. Oh, people who claim to be Muslim, but your hearts do not have Iman. Listen to me, the Prophet is saying, do not harm other believers. Do not criticize the other Muslims. Do not follow their mistakes. Notice, the other believers have mistakes. It's not as if they're without mistake. But the Prophet is telling people, don't follow the mistakes of other people. Don't advertise the mistakes of other people. Don't criticize other people for your own mistake, for their own mistakes. Why? He said, whoever follows the mistakes of his brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will follow his mistakes. Man akhihi, awratahu. You're going to follow the awrah. The awrah here means mistakes. The guy's covered it up. The guy hasn't publicized it. He's doing a sin. You find the mistake. You discover it and you publicize it. You tell other people about it. You go to all of your friends and family. You post it on Facebook. I saw such and such a person do this. Our Prophet said, if you're going to follow other people's mistakes, guess what? Allah Azza wa Jal is going to monitor yours. And then he said, and whenever Allah follows the mistakes of a person, that person shall be humiliated. Even if he remains in his house, Allah will humiliate him. This hadith, brothers and sisters, is pertinent to the entire genre of concentrating on yourself rather than the mistakes of other people. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ, hadith is in Mustadim Muhammad. A man came to the Prophet and said, Oh Sini Ya Rasulullah, give me some good advice, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet said, nasi ma ta'lamu min nafsik. The knowledge you have of yourself should prevent you from speaking about other people. I want to pause here and I want you to absorb this hadith. The knowledge you have of yourself. This is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and it is so deep and profound. The knowledge you have of yourself should stop you from talking about other people. You have enough to deal with on your own plate. You have enough sins in your own backpack that you're carrying. You have enough to answer for for your own life and lifestyle. Why are you bothered about exposing and criticizing and making fun of and mocking other people? If you truly understood yourself, then you would be concentrating only on yourself rather than other people. And it is reported from Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. Some have said it's a hadith, but it is not a hadith. It's from Abu Hurairah. And this message is also found in the New Testament as well from Jesus. And uh, Abu Hurairah also took this and spread it from himself as well. That Abu Hurairah radiallahu an said, one of you sees the speck of dust in his brother's eyes and he ignores the log sticking out of his own eye. 
one of you sees the smallest mistake in his brother and makes it a big deal. And as he does so, he ignores the big mistake in his own life and he attempts to cover it up. Once again, the notion of why are you obsessed with other people's mistakes and faults? You have enough to worry about on yourself. A righteous person, a muttaqi, a person who truly understands what qiyamah is, is going to be far more concerned with his or her own faults and shall prioritize his or her own sins than the faults and sins of other people. The famous scholar of our tradition, Ibn Hibban al-Busti, one of the great scholars of hadith, and also, actually interestingly, also a philosopher and a person of the tazkiyah to soul, nafs, he wrote a lot of books. This great scholar, Ibn Hibban, he died in the third century. He wrote, الواجب على المسلم لزوم السلامة بدرك التجسس عن عيوب الناس. The obligation on every Muslim is to have a pure heart by abandoning eavesdropping and spying on other people and by concerning correcting himself rather than correcting others because whoever is concerned about his own faults will live a far more peaceful life and will not be bothered about other people and the more he is concerned about other people's faults the less he shall be concerned about his own faults then ibn hibban said allah says in the quran O oh, you who believe, defend yourselves against those that are attacking you from close by. Defend yourself from immediate enemies rather than far away ones. Verse in the Quran, in other words, monitor the close enemies rather than the far ones. Ibn Hibban says, listen to this, your closest enemy is yourself. Begin with yourself, your own ego. Your closest enemy is what is inside of you. Begin with your own ego. Allah says, conquer your immediate enemies, conquer your soul before you conquer anybody else's. Take care of your own nafs before you worry about other anfus out there. Beautiful extraction from a verse in the Quran. One of the scholars of our past, one of the students of the Sahaba, somebody came to him and said, I notice you never mention somebody else with evil. I notice, you know, all the khutbas I go, all the durus I go, you never mention somebody else's name. I go to other people's lectures, they're always mentioning other people. And this great scholar and student of the Sahaba, he said, I am not satisfied with my own self such that I began criticizing other people. I feel myself is so much worthy of criticism. How can I criticize other people when I am the number one critic of myself in my own eyes? What right do I have to talk about other people when in my own eyes I am the biggest sinner? And in telling us this, he tells us the reality of what taqwa is. Once in a gathering, of great people. Ibn Abbas was sitting there as well, the great cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as is prone to happen in gatherings, a person began to mention backbiting, so talking about another person. I saw this and this happened. Some social drama might have taken place. Ibn Abbas interrupted, stopped the conversation. Ibn Abbas said, if you want to talk about the faults of mankind, Rather than begin with the faults of other people, let's begin with your own faults. Let's hear your own faults and then you can talk about other people's faults. Ibn Abbas taught him wisdom. Why are you obsessed about social drama? Why are you creating a scene and talking about the mistakes and the sins of other people? If you really want to talk about the sins of mankind, well then, let's begin with you. And let you tell us what you have done rather than you backbiting about your fellow Muslim brother or sister. So brothers and sisters, be careful of going down this evil slippery slope. Be careful of ascribing piety to yourselves. And this is a surreptitious, a hidden manner of ascribing piety to yourself. When you talk bad about other people, when you smack talk about other people, there is an inherent psychological reality that you think you're better than other people. You think you're not worthy of that smack talk and that criticism. And that's why our religion teaches us, be careful, brothers and sisters. Concern yourself with your own before that of others. Now, how do we go about this process? What are some practical steps that we can take to concentrate on ourselves other than other people? Number one, point number one, 
And this is something we learn from the seerah, we learn from the sahaba, we learn from the books of the great sages, Imam al-Ghazali, Ibn Hibban, so many scholars, Ibn al-Qayyim, they mention this as a tactic. They mention this as a routine of the mu'min, of the person on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things we incorporate in our daily schedule, one of our scholars said every night before you go to sleep, do this, is to go over your own fault lists in your own life for the day. What did I do wrong today? What was the mistakes that I did? All too often, we completely ignore our own errors. Days, weeks, months go by before we even think, what are the sins that I have done? And this is not the way of the pious, the way of the righteous, the way of the muttaqi. You are constantly self-assessing yourself. You need to be your own CPA. You need to be your own attorney and accountant. You need to take account of yourselves before Allah will take account of you. And the way that is done is you literally dedicate some private time, some alone time. That's why our scholars who do it when they lie down in bed before going to sleep, they're going to go over the daily routine. What did I do wrong today? What sin did I commit? Who did I backbite? Whose feelings did I hurt? Where was I short in my salah, in my charity? What missed opportunity was there? When you call constantly make it a habit to monitor your own faults automatically in your daily routine you're going to concentrate on the faults of other people in a less manner and uh, one of the uh, scholars of the past, uh, Ibn al-Ghazali, he, he mentioned this explicitly as a part of the uh, routine of the righteous person. Muhasaba. It's one of the chapters in Ihya al din and that is the, the chapter of self-accounting. Point number two, the second advice. Any time you find your mind wandering to the mistakes of other people, any time you start contemplating, you listen to a khutbah like, oh, that guy needed to listen to it. Stop yourself immediately. And ask yourself, what will I benefit from this advice? Forget so-and-so. How can I benefit from this advice? Change the course of your mind to stop thinking about other people's faults and wonder when you listen to something of benefit, what can I put in my own life that I can be a better person? Point number three, remind yourself of the dangers of all that is surrounding putting other people down because this is a disease that leads to many other diseases when you're obsessed with other people automatically a bunch of other sins take place of them spying the justice you're always wanting to see what the other person is doing of them eavesdropping of them is to find out in a manner that is not halal what is going on in their lives of them ghiba constantly backbiting, of them bohdan, slander, of them su el van, thinking the worst of your brother. Sometimes an ambiguous thing happens. It could be good, it could be bad, but you have trained your mind to always be critical. So you're automatically gonna read in the worst interpretation. And this is betraying your own weakness. We're supposed to have good thoughts of people, pure thoughts of people. We're supposed to make excuses. But when your mind goes down this road of constant criticism, all excuses get thrown out the window and you become a person who always sees the glass as being half empty, who always sees the negative of life. And wallahi, such people are despised by their own family and their friends and society. Nobody likes a grumpy person, always looking at the negative. And when you go down this route, you become such a person. Number, point number four. Point number four. Teach yourself to always put other people in a better platform than you think they deserve, especially your brothers and sisters who are righteous. Think of them with better thoughts. And we learn this from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the Seerah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to our Prophet Musa, I have chosen you, you go to Fir'aun. You are the Prophet I've chosen. Musa immediately, what did he say? He said, Ya Rab, my brother is more eloquent than me. Can you send him as well? Notice, he didn't say, yes, I'm the chosen one. I won the first place. Allah said to him, tuka, I have chosen you. But in his mind, and this is a sign of piety, he was the more righteous. He was the more pious. But because he's the more righteous, because he actually has taqwa, when Allah says, I've chosen you, Musa says, I'm not the best person. Inna akhi Harun huwa My brother Harun is better than me. He's more eloquent than me. You should choose him, O oh Allah, and send him as well. Look at how the mind is thinking. The same goes to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man came to the Prophet and said, Oh, the best of Allah's creation. Ya khayr al-bariyya. And he is the best of the creation. He is. 
But immediately his humility said, no, no, that is my father Ibrahim. Ibrahim is the best of creation. Even though he is the best of creation, but in his humility, and this isn't false humility, this is genuine. He really believes Ibrahim is better than him, but we know that he is better than Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is a sign of taqwa when the best of the best says, no, no, I'm not the best. Ibrahim is the best. What does that show you? When another man comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he is trembling in fear, he's scared that the Prophet is such a big figure. Literally, he began trembling. The Prophet smiled, put a hand on his shoulder, and said, My dear brother, ya, ya ukhayya, hawin ala nafsik. Calm down. I am not a king. He said this, Inni less to be malak, I'm not a king. Inni less to be malak, I'm not a king. I am the son of a lady who was so poor, she couldn't eat fresh meat. She had to eat dried meat for her meals. I am a mere son of a lady who is very poor. He's putting himself down in a legitimate manner. Like, I am not a king. And he wasn't a king. He was a prophet. He was better than a king. I am not a king. I am the son of a lady who would have to eat dried meat. She couldn't afford to eat, you know, fresh meat. Why is he saying this? Because this is the sign of Iman, the sign of taqwa, that you don't make yourself bigger than you are, that you are somebody who puts himself down. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Jewish person and a Muslim person, they had a big fight, almost a fist fight. Actually, they did have a fist fight. The Jewish person said, Allah has chosen Musa over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Muslim said, Allah has chosen Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over the Prophet Musa. Now, in our Sharia, we do not put other prophets down by raising other prophets up. We don't do this. It's not as Allah Azza wa Jal says that all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kulluhum, all of them, they are the prophets of Allah. We don't consider in a manner that puts another one down. They both came to the Prophet. This hadith is in Bukhari. The Prophet himself is asked, Ya Rasulullah, the Muslim saying, I said, you are better than Musa. And this man, he said, Musa is better than you. Now, pause here. Technically, our Prophet is a higher degree than Musa. But the spirit of this Sahabi was not correct with utmost respect to him. His spirit was he wants to put Musa down by putting the Prophet up. That's not, we, are, we all look up to the Prophets. And so our Prophet said, Hadith is in Bukhari, La tufaddiluni ala Musa. Don't say I am better than Musa in this type of context. Don't say this because on the Day of Judgment, I will see Musa ahead of me in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will see him holding on to the throne of Allah. When I am re resurrected, he's going to be ahead of me. And the hadith goes on praising Musa. Point is, our Prophet sallam, did not consider himself in this manner. How can we consider ourselves in this manner? Even though he was the best of creation, he was the best of mankind, he was better than Musa. But it is not the way of the believer to ascribe piety to himself or herself. And the final point, brothers and sisters, with regards to this issue of concentrating on other people versus yourself. Remember, on the Day of Judgment, all the mistakes of all of mankind will not harm you as the smallest mistake on your own roster will irritate you. No matter what anybody else has done, it will not affect you at all. What you have done, the smallest of your sins will be bigger for you and more painful for you than the biggest sins of all of mankind. Now, all of this quick disclaimer before we finish the first khutbah. All of this has nothing to do with the Islamic obligation of preaching the truth and commanding the good and forbidding the evil. This must be done. Has nothing to do with this. And if you think that this topic contradicts commanding the good and forbidding with evil, then frankly, you have not understood the entire khutbah today. The khutbah today is about your own psychological nafs. It's about your own paradigm. It's about how you view yourself. Even when you command the good to somebody in your own heart, you should be feeling, yeah, but I am worse than him. Even though he's doing this sin, my sin is a bigger sin in the eyes of Allah than his sin. What we're talking about today is psychological and spiritual humility. That humility has nothing to do with the obligation of commanding the good and preaching the truth and forbidding the evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to his verses and imply us to the best of our lives. May Allah bless me and you with and through the Quran and may he make us of those who its verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask him for his the ghafoor and the rahman. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, al-Wahid, al-Ahad, al-Samad, 
الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد وبعد the concept of problematizing other people more than yourself is always a problem it's always a spiritual disease but this spiritual disease is compounded when a religious element is added unjustly and when religious fanaticism joins the picture overzealousness fanaticism is a common problem since the beginning of times even in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that beginning came of groups of people who thought themselves better than the sahaba astaghfirullah even better than the prophet sallallahu himself astaghfirullah and this is what happens when you allow the spiritual disease of arrogance of spiritual arrogance to corrupt your heart dear muslims and i especially appeal to our youngsters who are religious a smaller segment of us but still it is a reality I caution you of the lure of spiritual arrogance. I caution you of the appeal of fanaticism. The notion that I am upon the truth and everybody who opposes me is upon batil, is a deviant, is misguided. Be careful of the naming and shaming culture. Be careful of the online social drama scene because I swear to you and speak to those older than you that have gone through these phases. I swear to you there is no good in con concentrating on the faults of other people as you ignore your own you are going to become spiritually bankrupt this is a sign of arrogance to consider everybody to be misguided except you and a small group of people other than you our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hadith is a sahih muslim whoever says all of mankind is misguided and destroyed he is the most misguided of them whoever says everybody's off everybody's gone in fact he is the worst of them there is good in the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a great ummah the best ummah kuntum khayra ummah anybody who comes and tells you the bulk of the ummah is misguided anybody who tells you the majority of ulama are sellouts anybody who tells you only a small group of muslims is rightly guided i understand it feels good i understand you feel empowered i understand it makes you feel special. I don't doubt your sincerity I do doubt your knowledge and your wisdom this is not the way of Islam listen to me and listen carefully the bulk of the ummah is upon good that's not my words it's the words of our prophet system it's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Allah Allah says in the Quran you are the best ummah our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna ummati ummatan marhuma my ummah is an ummah Allah has shown mercy to this is the ummah of Allah azza wa jalla that he has chosen the bulk of it alhamdulillah is upon good and guidance therefore anybody who tells you everybody's misguided except us mark my words and listen to the senior scholars older than me and older than you they themselves are misguided because alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah the vast majority of muslims even if they don't live righteous lives they recognize righteousness they recognize piety the vast majority of our ulama they're preaching mainstream islam and this is the reality from the beginning of time anybody who said otherwise they went down the path of fanaticism look at the kharijites look at every other group you will find them to be small you will find them to be sectarian you will find them to be fanatical the bulk of the ummah has always been rightly guided and the bulk of islamic scholarship from the time of the sahaba up until our times they are preaching mainstream normative islam and the differences between them are trivial and they don't negate that overall they are upon good and upon khair brothers and sisters islam is not a netflix drama islam is not an hbo serial islam is not online entertainment and if you find that the majority of your islamic activism is online drama if you find the majority of what makes you feel better as a muslim is to put other muslims down then i tell you honestly this is not the islam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not the islam of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's not an islam that is going to benefit you concentrate on your own faults concentrate on improving yourself and even if other people are misguided 
you will have to answer for yourself on the day of judgment and listen to the senior most scholars listen to those who by and large don't get involved in online drama this is a sign of actual scholarship a sign of actual piety what you see online between various people here and there honestly this is not Islam it's not going to benefit you at all learn from the righteous ulama and learn from the greatest scholars that are alive you don't find them stooping to this level brothers and sisters I conclude with a famous statement of Imam Malik ibn Anas we all agree who Imam Malik was we all agree the greatest scholar of Medina from the time of the Tabi'un Taba Tabi'un Imam Malik said that in Medina I met groups of people in Medina I knew groups of people they did not have any mistakes amongst them but all they did was to find the mistakes of other people all they did was to talk about other people and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mistakes in them and they became the target of criticism because all they did was criticize other people and I met other groups of people they had mistakes but they were more busy with their own mistakes than the mistakes of other people so Allah concealed their mistakes and protected them from humiliation this is Imam Malik speaking two groups of people the one group they're obsessed with the mistakes of other people Imam Malik said Allah Azza wa Jal exposed them and Allah created for them mistakes humiliated them because all they could do is to be obsessed with other people and the other group sure they weren't perfect but they didn't worry about other people's mistakes they're worried about themselves and Allah blessed them conceal their mistakes and gave barakah in their da'wah this should be our philosophy as well concentrate on your own shortcomings bother with your own sins than the sins of other people and if you do so you will live more righteous life and you will be on the path to taqwa Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu Allahumma la tada'a fi hal yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farajta wa la daynan illa qadayta ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدا به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم وش ذكره يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب